if it takes you oh, 30 minutes to poo. That was like a 10 minute poo. It was more than 10 minutes. Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to the Wednesday Night Gentlemen Multimedia Empire official podcast. You are listening to episode number 60. Uh, this is a podcast where we like to talk about things like comic books, movies, TV shows, video games, and uh, technically political discourse, but really never. Um, I am your host, Tactic Angel, and with me is Midget Radio, my murderous socialist friend. Hello! Are you already sauced? Yeah, a little that's, bit. A little I took bit? I took one drink, and that's about my limit, so... Yeah? Yeah. That's all well, I can hold it, anymore. I'm not sure I've met a transistor radio that could um, <laughs> drink more than that, right? But it takes practice. Seems a little, seems a little low. <laughs> what are you drinking on today? I am drinking that good old bullet bourbon. Of bullet course. to the end. Yep, forever. I'm never drinking anything else ever again. I bet you probably won't. That's probably, that's probably not true. Probably not. Uh, I am drinking Sexton. Again. Oh, okay. Nice. That That is the single malt Irish whiskey. Uh, a sexton is also a device that you use to measure the s- distance to stars and angles and whatnot. Yeah. So you can tell where you're at. So you can be a pirate. So, or navigate to China. Yes. Which curiously brings <laughs> us to our topic for today. What a segue. <laughs> uh, we will be talking about Skyscraper. Uh, Skyscraper is an action film starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Uh, He plays Will Sawyer, a former U.S. Army soldier and FBI hostage rescue team lead guy. Uh, Will is hired by his friend to vet a security or to vet the security of The Pearl, a new fictional tallest building in the world built uh, in, believe it or not, China. Uh, Will takes his wife and two kids. They serve as the first guests in the skyscraper, but when a group of criminals set the building on fire, they also serve as a good deal of motivation for our protagonist. Midget Radio. Excellent summary, Tactic Angel. Midget Radio. We watched an action film. We did, in the theaters of all places. What did you think of it? Um, you know, it was all right. Do you, don't you get the impression that, like, The Rock could do these kind of movies and play these kind of roles in his fucking sleep and still, like, actually be kind of a compelling screen presence? Uh, I, I think that not only is the answer to that question yes, uh, but I also think you may have accidentally stumbled upon probably one of the the larger problems with this film. (laughs) Don't you feel like there's a good amount of sleepwalking happening with the reading of the lines? Yes. I would say for even just the the way the movie moves through its own script. It, yeah. (laughs) There are a couple of, of, uh, voiceovers where, where like, one baddie will be on the phone with another baddie. And it really does sound like uh, probably even less uh, normal than when I'm reading my own notes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It was, it was like they, they, they were reading the Samsung user's guide. To yeah. their cellular phone, or in this case, I guess probably tablet. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't help that everyone has like pretty mechanical, you know, pretty archetypal roles uh, in this movie. Um, I mean, it, almost everybody is going through the motions. Um, I mean, even God, the if for an action movie, you know, it, it's probably one of the most boring villains I've ever seen. Um, and he's really not present that much. He's not. Yeah, he he's not. Um, and then, of course, you've got like 
the cops that are investigating it and at first they're like the protagonist is the bad guy and then one cop is like maybe not but the other cop is like hey man yeah he is because like because of stuff <laughs> and, you know you so you get like those stupid little conflicts and stuff um that we've seen a hundred times before uh so it's just i don't know i i'm not quite sure how this movie got made um i'm not sure like why anybody wanted to put any money into it it's not a bad movie um but as far as like is it the thing that's gonna like bring back the action movies of 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 yesterday prop probably not it's not a good it's not a good air uh to those to those films uh midget radio what if i told you that the budget for this film was 125 million (laughs) dollars I would wonder how many blue screens that buys you. <laughs> because that seems, seems a little like high, doesn't it? That's all they needed. Was... It seems high. It seems a bit high. Yeah. It seems like $50 million high. Yeah. I mean, is that just like the rock salary or? <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's possible. Um, there, there mm. really aren't any other, any other big names in this. Uh, let me take a little detour though. Okay. Um, on a scale of one to five, old school Netflix scale. Oh. Okay. How hot is Hannah Quinn Livian in this movie? Oh, the um, the badass assassin chick. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. Cuz I'm going to give her a f- I'm going to give her 5 stars. Yeah, that works for me. She's a tiny lady. She seems like a tiny lady. Oh, uh, yeah, I yeah. I'm but sure yeah. she's she has got a lot of creative editing making her look good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Plus I think the only person she actually physically confronts is uh, Nev Tyler, what is her name? Nev Campbell. Her name? Yeah, Campbell. Ty- yeah, I don't know. yeah, in the in the car. Um, yeah. Nev Campbell's no slouch either, which I'm kind of. I never really cared about Nev Campbell, but in this movie, I was like, hmm. Um, but yeah, so she fights Nev Campbell in the car, and then when they take over the fucking uh, security building thing, she fights somebody there too. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, like she two does. miscellaneous dudes. Um, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I have a question for you. Um, mm-hmm. is it really even because I'm, st- I'm back and forth on this? Um, I think one of the more disappointing aspects of this movie is that I don't really think it feels all that much like an action movie. Um, it feels like half if disaster you, movie half yeah <laughs> action movie which makes a whole i don't care pretty much <laughs> well um i want to say that the influence of die hard is strong in sure. this movie yeah i mean skyscraper uh terrorists um yeah. you I mean, even when they have, (laughs) yeah, your wife's in the building. Um, Even when you have, I mean, you, you up the ante with the two kids, but whatever. Yeah. But like, and and you even see it when the, the cops are down there and they're kind of like, I want to talk to this guy. And you're like, what, what is this? Yeah. Yeah. uh, Is this going to be just like, what's his name? Damn it. We forgot his name. Carl. Last his time. name is Carl from Family Matters. Carl from Family Matters. <laughs> I want to talk to Carl from Family Matters. <laughs> like he's talking to Bruce Willis, and it's fine. Yeah. It. Um. I was like, man, this this is feeling a lot like that movie. Like they were trying to do that, and then they were trying to like throw in some some other, and it, yeah, it's a disaster. It's a disaster movie meets meets. Die Hard, starring The Rock. Yeah. Uh, and it costs too much money. Way too much. And, 
and it's there's not enough focus or kind of love for whatever this was because I I kind of felt like this was like it wasn't it wasn't bad no no but but when like you get into the survival stuff it's like uh yeah okay. I like that stuff just bo- it's just boring to me um well between between like the people who are trying to do things in this building and the fire itself it's like well clearly the more interesting antagonist should be the people who have guns yeah because a fire is just a fire yeah and and this isn't like the iceberg in titanic or something it's not (laughs) like this didn't actually happen and this isn't like some major historical event yeah. that's that's been romanticized by history. This is this is a movie about a building that doesn't exist in China, which I think is to sell more movie tickets in China. Maybe. Maybe. Um I think so. I mean yeah. it's got to. I don't fucking know. They are a pretty um, big market apparently, so <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um and then it's I I just don't I just don't feel like the the survival scenes have the same amount of weight. Now when when uh Will Sawyer is trying to get back into the building, I thought that was a little bit interesting, but Yeah. I don't know. I I feel like they needed to speed it up a little bit because a lot of this felt like the pacing wasn't quite right. But if you pace it any faster than this, it's under an hour and a half long. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I I think that's probably part of it. But then somebody probably should have said, well, maybe we should have made, like, Roland Mahler's character more interesting. Yeah. And we should have gone more into why Roland Mahler's character wants, has a beef with Ng Chin Han, right? Yeah. And, like... Great. But they didn't do that. So, like, <laughs> Roland Mahler is not Hans Gruber. No. <laughs> no. Hans Gruber is interesting, and he's played by a great actor. Yeah. And this movie exists. Yeah. And is inoffensive, I would say. Yeah. Uh, reasonably entertaining, but, like, not, it's not knocking anything out of the park. No. No, yeah, it's overall pretty, pretty mechanical, and yeah, I I don't know the 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 survival stuff. The oh my god, there's a fire, something is falling, or the thing that I'm grabbing onto is giving way. Uh, you know. <laughs> uh huh. I don't care. Uh, I don't care. It mostly it like it, it's like watching somebody else play Uncharted a little bit. Um, it's big extended like stunt sequence it doesn't help that everything is like clearly in front of a fucking blue screen you know like it doesn't look remotely real um for the most part uh some of the looking down shots look good enough yeah they did a good job Um, with the rocks uh amputated leg that was cool i kind of like that element but (laughs) yeah i did too um and actually like Part of me is is really disappointed in this movie because, like, if you could make this a more compelling action film, then more people would, like, think about the theme behind The Rock's character, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. And, and like, there's a lot of people who have bad things happen to them, and it's like, woe is me. And actually, one of the characters that that is in this is kind of like that. And he's clearly a whole lot better off than than uh, Will Sawyer yeah. ended up, and and yet he wallows in his misfortune, and and you know the Rock moves on and finds a new way to define his life and sets his his own goals and has his own success. And well, he has to bang Nev Campbell, you know. That's not bad. Yeah, it's that's not it could bad. be better, but it's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> I mean, no, Hannah. Quinn, Quinn, Quinn <laughs> That's <Olivia>. true. <laughs> of course, I 
I don't think that the the math works out for us. I'm on that one. sure it doesn't, but <laughs> yeah uh it's real close anyway (laughs) it is if it is it's by a wire um (laughs) let's go ahead and rate this so we can talk about spoilers all right midget radio on a scale of one to five old school netflix how does this movie rate i don't know man (laughs) you know i'll probably give it Two stars? I almost feel like that's too harsh, but I gave Ant Man two and a half stars, so Ant-Man Yeah, that was, was a dumb that was a dumb thing movie. to do. No, it's a perfectly reasonable thing to do, but uh <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go with probably three. Yeah. Probably three. <laughs> I I'm not I'm not completely um I think that the pros for this movie outweigh its cons, but there are a lot of cons that that kind of drag it down and yeah. sadly make the themes in it not quite work because you're not taking the characters as seriously as you should. No. <laughs> so yeah. let's pop that spoiler tag up there. All righty. Now we can talk about uh, the best fight scene in this movie. Well, okay, I want to point first to the best scene in this movie, which does... Um, initiate a fight scene and that is when the rock pulls a sword out of his waist (laughs) you think so yeah you think that's the best part it's it's my favorite part because it was the most unexpected thing that occurred in this entire movie he looked directly at a sword (laughs) yeah he had he looked at the sword and he was like there's a sword but i didn't expect it to be hidden on his person um and then when the guns come out he's like I have a motherfucking sword. He didn't really get to use the sword a whole lot. I mean, it was cool that he did use the sword. I just didn't expect to see him whip out a sword. That was fucking awesome. Okay, interesting that you would think that that's the best fight scene, though. No, it's just the best scene. (laughs) It's the best shot in the movie. I Okay, then what's the best fight scene? Uh, I don't know. It's probably in the apartment. Yes, it is in the apartment. (laughs) That, and it's just, it's probably the cheapest of all of the sets that they yeah. have. Yeah. Because it's literally like, we need a room, a couch, some stuff. Mm-hmm. Also a dishwasher. We're going to fuck up the dishwasher. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that dishwasher is fucked. They're you can use dishwashers one. as the defensive. <laughs> it's pretty but great. But like, first of all, what a fucking prick. Ripping your friend's prosthetic leg off. <laughs> I know, dude. No honor but, in that fight, man. Jesus. But like, The Rock is still hopping around. Yeah. They did a pretty good job with that. I like that. I like that he had to hop. And I liked, like, it was interesting to watch the fight scene, like having him when they were in the kitchen. And it's like, I mean, he's got a hop up against the wall which is like the worst place you could possibly be but it's like it doesn't give you a lot of options no but it's like he's got to fucking be upright so <laughs> yeah and he technically is armed yeah. with a uh st- oh, stove top yeah <laughs> yeah that was good that was like that was i mean that was absolutely one of the more like thoughtful uh and creative um fights in this entire fucking movie uh, it it really was, and and God, I I do kind of love like I I liked it at the time, and and you don't really get to see much more of it, but like the guy who's dying is like super, he's super sorry that he has to do this to his friend. Yeah, but he he feels like he has to do it, and he's like trying to tell him. Your family isn't supposed to be in the building. I tried to get them out of the building. Yeah. And he, he basically tried to, to screw over his friend in like the the least, <laughs> like the, the best way possible. Like yeah. The, the least worst way possible. Yeah. So that somebody would steal his stuff and then all the bad stuff would happen and he would just be like, oh, well, it sucks. Yeah. Um, But then he's he's sorry about that and and the rocks character is like 
trying to help him still, even though they just got in a knife versus yeah. oven or stovetop fight uh, with a gun. Yeah. <laughs> so I like that. It also had the most character going for it because after that it was oh, like yeah. not a, not a whole lot. And I the underwriter is is an assassin. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually did kind of enjoy the fact that like this was all riding on a goddamn insurance policy. <laughs> like his whole the whole reason he had to inspect do the building security and all of that shit. It's, man, just got to write this insurance policy. It's fucking yeah. great. You're like, yeah. Well, I mean, that's that stuff happens. It needs to be insured, so. <laughs> I don't think you would get a third-party independent contractor for that. I don't know. I think Okay, no. No, we <laughs> it seemed weird. Um, insurance companies have field underwriters for large commercial structures. Yeah. And they might call in additional engineering firms to help them and and whatnot, but they they also have people who go out and do the inspections themselves. Yeah, it didn't make sense that like the building owner would be the guy <laughs> like hiring this outside. Like this fucking vendor. <laughs> yeah. Go find me a vendor. Yeah. And and then like no the insurance problem. company's like, what's the name of this company? I can't help but notice that it's run out of a residential <laughs> home. It has no employees. Yeah. So I don't know. I ignoring the, the internal workings of of multi million dollar insurance companies it's that got sort of silly yeah uh helicopter can't take off helicopter can't take off gets blown up wow oh. this feels a little bit like die hard yeah you know what i like so like they find out that the fucking underwriter is a bad guy big surprise uh and the guy who's like his security guard um whatever his name is chow security guard whatever the fucking building owner's name is um, yes. who's like already been shot and is like dying on the fucking platform. Mm -hmm. I liked that he was like, I'm going to kill this fucking helicopter pilot and fuck everyone right now. <laughs> that was pretty sweet. That was a good decision. Good last act by that dying security guard. Fuck this. You guys aren't going anywhere. I like that guy. Yeah. He did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good choice. <laughs> uh... But like that whole, s s <laughs> there's just there's just weird stuff happening. Yeah, in this this movie, and I think the first, the thing that like didn't surprise me at all because, like it's it's screenwriting one oh one. It's like, do you want to see the real Pearl? <laughs> yeah, and then he takes him up there, and it's like. I have invented a hollow deck. Yeah. And I have put it on the 220th floor of this building. Yeah. Um great. Yeah. <laughs> I bet that the climax of the movie yeah. <laughs> will happen in this room. With this hall of mirrors bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> it is really just a hall of mirrors. Yeah. <laughs> which doesn't make a ton of sense no. because I don't think it would be all that disorienting. I'm not but, sure it would be. They were spaced kind of weirdly, you know. But yeah. <laughs> now, when you said about the sword, though, I did like that he stabbed an LCD te television with the sword. Yeah, and and then later threw the guy into the sword that was poking out the back end of it. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. I was like, oh, that's creative. <laughs> but the whole, I just have one thing to tell you. What's that? I'm behind you. Oh, you know, like, that was stupid. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't make any sense. Like, Great. Whatever. You saved your family. Yeah. And then you said, oh, I'm sorry. But then Nev Campbell saved you. Yeah. From dying. Great. Yeah. 
But that guy, like, he fell off the building. Kind of, kind of died like Hans Gruber a little bit. Yeah. Well, I think he, he got grenaded too. But you know, still. <laughs> Were it not for the grenade, <laughs> let's put it this way: the fragments of his body will eventually hit the pavement, just like Hans. Grew Very true. Body. They're going to end up in the same spot. So probably. <laughs> but like, I mean, think about it. This movie is heavily inspired by Die Hard. Oh yeah, clearly yeah. I mean, the fact that you set the building on fire, um. Changes the dynamic just a little bit. Yeah. But it's like the police think that The Rock did it. Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah. the police captain outside thinks that Bruce Willis is in on the act. Yep. No matter what he Helicop- does. <laughs> helicopter blows up. Guy falls to his death. It's, a, it's in a fucking skyscraper. Yeah. You have to rescue your family. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's all there. It's all there. (laughs) I guess there was no insurance plot. It was technically a banking scheme (laughs) with the other one, which is is completely different. But they're both financial (laughs) services subplots that probably make equal little amounts of sense. You know what I did like? So that the fucking kids, um, like the one kid with asthma, you know? Yeah, I kind of enjoy because as soon as I saw him, I was like, God damn it. He's going to be caught in this fucking fire. And then like he's going to run out of the asthma medication um, and it's going to be like really super awful. And but they got they got him and Nev Campbell out of the building actually like pretty quickly, like pretty efficiently. Kind of appreciated that. I kind of appreciated that the movie didn't take the. It's his last inhaler, the very last the last puff from the inhaler. Oh God, what's he gonna do now? We like we didn't have to sit through that scene. Sort of appreciated that. <laughs> yeah. I, but like there was a part of me that really didn't like the whole, uh, the rocks hugging his his daughter and he's apologizing for something. <laughs> oh yeah, because they're gonna die. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I'm You're sorry. sorry for fucking what? Well, that makes sense. <laughs> And uh, then, Tact Gage will be the worst father. He's so, he's just, he's apologizing because he's the dad, and it's like his duty to protect her, and he wasn't able to do that because they're about to fucking die together uh, in this goddamn building. So he feels some sense of responsibility for that. You fucking robot. It makes perfect so then, sense. <laughs> but the part that I didn't like about it was really that. Uh, Nev Campbell had to save The Rock. Why? She just turned it off and turned it on because it was a cute callback to the fucking phone thing. (laughs) I understand that the phone (laughs) thing was there to set that up. It wasn't that cute. No, it wasn't. (laughs) Stupid. What What it was is if if you look at what we want in in an action movie star. And I don't know if I completely believe this. And I don't remember where I got it from. It might have actually been Red Letter Media. But, oh, good Lord. But what you want in your action movie hero is that when he walks in the room, you know that he can kick anybody's ass. Yeah. Right? And, and like, the whole idea is that the action, the action movie star is supposed to resolve the plot of the movie. <laughs> and in this case, it was just like, well, he got most of the way there. Yeah. And then somebody else had to save him. And it was somebody who knew how to use an iPad. And it yeah. was just it was just a little bit like, well, that's that's too bad. <laughs> I guess like here's the thing. For that to work, I think I would have had to care more about the family. Yeah. But there's not much there, right? Sure. Well, The Rock would have also had to have actually been like an action movie hero in this movie. And I would argue that yeah. he's really not. I mean, cuz this isn't really that this isn't really much of an action movie. It has it has elements, but yeah. Yeah. It's just it doesn't really Yeah, there's too much 
There's just too much shit with the fucking fire. How are we going to cross this? Oh, we're trying to cross this bridge, but the fire burned it away, and now we're separated. And then we go further, and the fucking burning tree falls and separates us even further. Uh, I mean, it's just tedious. Like, that stuff is just fucking tedious. Um, so... Where does... Where does the root structure for a tree of that size go <laughs> in a skyscraper? I have no idea. Because I don't give a fuck how many like little trees you have, right? <laughs> no, that was a pretty big tree. But if you're talking about yeah. having an evergreen 200 stories up, yeah, I don't think so, man. I don't know. I don't. I don't think that works. I don't know. Quantum roots, or maybe it's nano roots nanotechnology roots i don't know i don't know but it's dumb it's dumb um and like the plot was they want to get that usb drive yep what the fuck man <laughs> but and if he dies somehow the technology will automatically disseminate it to everyone <laughs> no one knows how this works but if he gets it, if he gets what's on the USB drive, he can reverse engineer whatever uh, to make the money undetectable. Cause, what? Cause fine. Cause sure. Like so. <laughs> I yeah. mean, what are you? What I don't get it. Uh, <laughs> I feel like in some way, actually, this is this is a thought that I had when I left the movie theater. I feel like. Um, superhero movies made this movie bad. You think so? I think it's because like the the over the top sci fi stuff didn't work, and and you and I both know because uh, we both love Demolition Man. Yes, which is an almost flawless <laughs> action movie. Yes, that is completely silly, but engages in its world building seriously. Yeah. And and is fun. Yeah. And it it does everything right. It's a it is a great example of an action movie. And um we also both enjoy Time Cop. Yeah. Um not quite as perfect. <laughs> it is problematic, yeah. <laughs> but it is a thousand times better than Lupa. <laughs> Good God, yes. <laughs> um, but like both of those, both of those movies were willing to engage on their premise because, like, they do enough world building. Yeah. And like, this is just like today, I guess, or tomorrow. Yeah. Um, somebody builds this thing. Uh, this giant tower. Yeah. And then somebody has like a a death switch Wi-Fi in, in him somehow. Yeah. That we don't know how that works. And he's invented a holodeck. Yeah. And this completely impractical building. Yeah. <laughs> which is apparently powered by a giant blender. Yeah. So like there's a lot of moving parts here that don't make sense to me <laughs> and they, they don't establish like, even if they said 2024, I'd be like, okay, yeah, it's in the future. I can write off well, six years worth of whatever. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe that's good enough. Right. Yeah. But that doesn't happen. No, it's just, it's just, I assume that this is, you know, next week yeah this happens yeah and well there's just and, yeah and there's just nothing very like interesting about it you know like in demolition like, man the technology is kind of interesting like the secura foam in the fucking self-driving car um and the three seashells shit like they just they at least had like some fucking fun with that this is just like whatever it's and a the holodeck stun rod it's, and the whole social engineering yeah, thing yeah yeah and they're like this is uh we made a holodeck it's mostly just for me to hang out and for us to have the climactic battle scene in um and then john spot and you will find one credit for <laughs> yeah. violation of the verbal morality here's the here's the wind turbines and then there's a fucking park in the middle of the building otherwise People live in the top half and there are businesses in the lower half. 
who cares you know otherwise it's just a really tall building um mm -hmm. so yeah yeah i mean there's just nothing interesting or unique really uh about it have you ever lived in a skyscraper that seems like a tremendous pain in the ass wouldn't you i would think it would be i mean unless you just want to live in the skyscraper and that's it because i guess you would just like go down to the lower floors where the fucking grocery store is um and who the fuck knows what else there's movie theater like if you want your whole life to be indoors yeah i guess, I guess. Well, i don't own a car i never have to leave my house yeah yeah i'm not super into that but you know maybe some people are but like i'm just trying to think of um all of the the garbage like getting my groceries up there yeah or like you and i have dogs yeah right Take them to the park. Where do I, guess. I go take my dog? I guess I could go to the park. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hundred stories tall. Wonder what the time what frame is on that to get from <laughs> wherever you are to it didn't seem like they it all... took anybody that long, but they also kind of bullshit the way that uh elevators work in these. Yeah. Because what will happen with like super tall buildings is you will have a series of elevators. So yeah. you'll take one set of elevators like in the Sears Tower up to like level 40. Yeah. And take another one up to like level 60 or 80. Yeah. And then maybe another one all the way to the top. Um, I think I've got my numbers wrong there, but you get the point. And it just seems like it would be a, like in this one, they're almost like turbo lifts. Yeah. They just work. Yeah, they just go wherever you need them to go. Yeah. Uh, midget radio. Hmm. I was going to I was gonna ask this earlier, but I assume that the answer is clearly this in no way <laughs> uh, measures up to walking tall. Oh, good God, no. Jesus Christ, no. <laughs> no, that's a fucking glorious... Uh, action movie and yeah this no there's too much of the disaster bullshit there's really not like any sort of interesting conflict or anything going on um yeah i i think what's frustrating about it is that um it proves that the rock is a compelling enough screen presence on his own um and should be able to churn out moderately fucking decent um you know, to, to really good uh, action movies. And it sucks that he doesn't. It's uh, it's annoying to me that, that, that he doesn't. He should be uh, doing do more. Uh, I, I, it's like, I'm just trying to picture like, right? Seriously, th there must have been producers or screenwriters or his agent or whomever who have put like, God knows how many fucking like straight up action movie scripts in front of his fucking face. Right. Uh, and like, this is the one that he did. Um, I just, I don't understand that process. Maybe it's just money. I don't fucking know, but like, I don't, I just don't get it. I don't understand why he decided to do this movie versus. <laughs> Maybe he could be in an episode of uh, Star Trek discovery wasn't because yeah. he was in he was Voyager, already, wasn't he yeah. yeah he was in uh <laughs> sunkatse yeah. episode which also had our good good friend jeffrey combs in. yay <laughs> jeffrey, jeffrey combs, combs is in would have made star this trek but <laughs> he would have made this movie better oh god yes <laughs> if jeffrey combs was the underwriter <laughs> that would have been so much more interesting <laughs> <laughs> oh i would have loved that and it's like right away you would have known i mean <laughs> that guy is evil yes how Some, do i know something's off <laughs> because he's the reanimator <laughs> oh, do you know how much it greatest. costs to make walking tall no 46 million dollars god I, uh, there's no reason for action movies to be like stupidly like just outsized you know as far as budget i mean honestly 46 million dollars is more than than i thought it was going to cost my guess is that's all above credits oh yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, because yeah. there's not there's not a lick of CG going into that movie. No. You just need that two by four or the extra yeah. four by four. He smashes those fucking slot machines and shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, that is not a computer generated slot machine. <laughs> so I'm going to guess. I mean, I'm going to guess most of that's hiring Dwayne Johnson, Johnny Knoxville and, and uh, yeah, Neil McDonough. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think so. Neil McDonough. Yeah. I liked him. I yeah. like him a lot in uh Band of Brothers. Yeah great in that and he's great in and in um oh shit Raylan Givens Justified is, well yes Justified my god what is wrong with you season three I think yeah 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 much better movie much fucking better movie um I'm gonna be real interested to see how this uh plays out I don't think a lot of people are gonna be super interested in I'm I doubt it. Yeah. What if they're like the action film, like no one sees action films and no one sees disaster movies. Yeah. So what if we got all of the people (laughs) who see both of those things to come see this movie? Maybe. (laughs) Maybe that's like the idea. Maybe. Maybe that's what was behind it. I wonder if it will actually do much better than... Whatever fucking goddamn disaster movie has recently come out that I have not seen. Um, wasn't there one called Geostorm? Yeah, Geostorm. Kind of, it was like a storm but that was, on the planet. Planetary storm. Well, wasn't that uh, that they build a giant planetary weather controller? Oh, is thing? that what happens? <laughs> like they. Like they have on Risa. Okay. And then it just I'm goes just making crazy. sure we get as as many um, <laughs> Star Trek references in here as possible. But um, no, I think somebody sabotages it, right? Uh, I don't know. Okay. And uh, I'm not 100% sure how that works. I thought it was just a planet storm. When I, I first saw that, when I first saw the trailer for it, I thought it was like one of those asylum movies, you know, uh-huh. like the, I, that's what I thought initially. I was but like, wow, good for them getting this played in a movie theater. But, but <laughs> <laughs> it stars Gerard Butler. Yeah. And Gerard reason. Butler. <laughs> it, well, Gerard Butler in, in that movie plays the smartest man in the world. So, yeah. There's a bit of a jump. Well, that's there. why there's a geostorm. I mean, that's, you I know, guess. that's how you get there. If Gerard Butler is your smartest dude. <laughs> yes. This ape like man <laughs> is the best that we have. Yep. This is why we have these problems. <laughs> now, I, I think somebody was trying to take it over or there was a glitch in the city. I'm not really sure. I didn't watch it. Yeah. I don't mm. think anybody did. No, I don't think anyone did either. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'd be surprised. Unless, you know, it's a hot day. You just want to sit in some air conditioning for a while. But it came out in October of last year. Wow. So I'm going to guess it wasn't too warm. Yeah, too bad. They need to come. Man, they should have timed that better. <laughs> we need this movie to play when it's 100 degrees outside. <laughs> Uh, according to this, it cost 120 million to make and made 221 million. That's a profitable Jesus movie. Christ, then I guess people are seeing disaster movies. And I think that <laughs> also had some action nonsense in it too. Tactic Angel, would it? Is it? Is it possible that the Wednesday night gentlemen just don't fucking have their fingers on the pulse of? <laughs> Your average American. Might that explain a lot of things about. (laughs) Well, it explains why we don't talk about politics anymore. (laughs) Man, what if we can't talk about movies anymore? What if it gets that bad? (laughs) Honestly, considering most of the. Geostorm 2. (laughs) Most of the. Most of the comic book stuff we hate, I'm sure. Uh, I like solidly two to three video games a year. 
Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we barely talk about television. Oh yeah. Well, we do, but the thing is, we we talk about like Netflix series. Yeah, right? we do. We do need to. I. We should talk about the Expanse at some point, but yeah, we sh- we should. Yeah, I agree. And then Star Trek know. Discovery season two. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> They're starting to release set photos. <laughs> so skyscraper people are going to see this movie including the wednesday night gentlemen they just but they don't understand why there were a surprising why. number of people in the theater really I, I, I i did have a pretty empty theater for the most part maybe like six seven other people in there did you go at like a reasonable time or do you go at like a weird time well i i mean i went at like 10 o'clock in the morning um and of course there are a shitload of theaters here and even in the theater where i was it was playing on at least two or three screens so so i went at like lunchtime on friday okay. which i assume people are still working yeah and I want to say there was about two dozen people in my theater. That's pretty good. Well, I mean, it's it was a full service theater, so it's like super big seats and, yeah. and everything. And I think they had, I think they had two theaters devoted to it. Okay. And I don't know. I just don't. I don't. I don't, I don't know, understand man. why people see these things, I but like either. at the same time, why can't we just get Terminator 2 back? Yeah. Yeah. It's a better movie. So <laughs> Yeah, time I don't know. I don't understand. I don't understand Give me. either. I don't get How it. is it? I don't know. Yeah. Fucking skyscraper. I mean, what is that conversation like? Do you want to go see skyscraper? Like with your wife, you know. I don't know how you even. Why? Well, I don't know. The well, I was it. gonna commit suicide, but that sounds marginally <laughs> right? better. At least put that off for a couple, well, an hour and a half. So. <laughs> I thought this movie was longer. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but if skyscraper proves anything, it proves that, you know, then there's plenty of room for the fucking uh action movie i don't get it demolition man 57 million dollars nets 159 like that's that's pretty solid yeah because that's like you figure it costs right around 80 after marketing i guess yeah two dollars per dollar yeah well the the usual math is that you figure that marketing costs 50 percent of whatever the budget is yeah um so you, anyway Ugh. that's why movies like the last jedi uh wait not last jedi but han solo fucking suck yeah apparently because of marketing <laughs> uh no it it if you if you look at their profit and loss on that it's Part of the reason why you expect that they lost money on it. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't looked at it because I don't give a shit. <laughs> Solo. Wow. It. You know, there was a. Man. There was like a. You said that we were gonna go see that. Yeah. And do you remember what I said? No. It was like, yeah, sure. And (laughs) (laughs) it was so dismissive that that I didn't even give it any thought. Yeah. At at no point did I consider going to the theater for that. I kept forgetting that it was out. And then I was like, I just saw The Last Jedi. And that was like a week ago. You know, yeah, that's plenty of Star Wars for me. (laughs) <laughs> that movie was two hours and 15 fucking minutes yeah. long. Now, the one thing that we can say nice that's about what we're actually talking about is that this movie was only about an hour and a half long. Yeah. Which is almost shocking when you think that like you have to clear 
your entire week to go see some movies because Pretty they're much. like three hours long. Yeah. Yeah. This was a rational length for a movie like this. <laughs> I would have. I would have liked it to be 10 minutes longer, have better pacing, and have more with the villain. That's that's what I want. Yeah, and ditch literally everything that had to do with surviving in a fire. Uh, I could do without all of that. The burning bridge, the burning tree, climbing on the outside of the building, which I didn't quite understand in the first place why he even needed to do that. Um, it just, because the, it just takes so much time. It's because just, the hard reset was no i know it's it you gotta you gotta go to the turbine but it's like is there no path to the fucking turbine that is inside the goddamn building like is there no fucking way to get there i didn't what how you know why would you it i mean it doesn't matter but like it seems like the worst way to get there's there. got to be a service and like where's the fucking jeffrey's tube come on like thank you there you go <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. Yeah, I just I just don't know about this one. It was sad panda. You know. It should have been better. Yeah, should've it should have been, been better. It should have been better. It was it was serviceable. It wasn't it wasn't bad, but It wasn't I was actually more worried about this because I thought it was going to get way too into the family thing. Yeah. And in a way it would have been better if they'd gotten a little bit more into the family things so that I cared about the family. Yeah. Um, but then at the same time, it's good that it didn't get sappy. It's good you didn't have the, it's the last puff. Yeah, moment. God. Like, yeah. They got the kid out of there. Yeah, good. Asthma kid resolved. Great. <laughs> but it's actually like, you know that nothing's going to happen to the kid. No. Right? Yeah. The I kids mean, actually do make it worse. Yeah. That's a basically, I mean, you know that, that that's for all of these movies and it's why like the survival, it's part of why the survival stuff just doesn't fucking work. Cause like he's going to make it to the top of the ledge, you know, she's going to get across the fucking bridge. I mean, you know, like this stuff is going to happen. Um, so it's completely uninteresting. I mean, what makes action movies interesting is, Part of it, anyway, is, you know, stuff like the fight choreography, the, the the stunt sequences and the action sequences. But this is this is literally like three idiots uh, in front of a fucking green screen walking across a, a wooden board. That's all you're looking at. <laughs> it's, you know, it's boring. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I think I've I think while you were talking, I put my finger on why this doesn't work and why some other things do work. Okay. Now, I can't remember any of the movies that are like this, but maybe you can help me. There are certain movies that are about people who like to go climbing things in extremely cold weather. Oh, right. Yeah. And the reason why those survival movies work is because you have like a whole bunch of people who are all killable. Yeah. And who are all like, you don't know that everybody's going to make it off the mountain. In yeah. fact, you kind of think that one or two people for sure are not. Yeah. So like there's actually suspense. If, if the rock jumps incorrectly into the blender that powers the building. Yeah. <laughs> Cut to credits. Yeah, exactly. That's the end of it, you know. And and simply not going to happen. Right. Actually, I mean, that, the only way that could happen is if you had Sylvester Stallone right next to him cliffhanging off the side of the building. Um, God. Then maybe you're like, maybe he could die. But that whole sequence, I swore when I was in the theater, reminded me of a Star Trek thing. But the actual... The actual thing it was reminding me of was Galaxy Quest when they had to go into oh, the yeah. engine room. <laughs> this episode was badly written. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's like why why is the engine room so dangerous? <laughs> But yeah, it's it was just like it's so silly. Yeah. It's, and you knew that nothing's gonna happen to the kids because other than like the last of us, kids don't die. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're going to be fine. Everyone's going to be fine. Yeah. Um, people, adults can die. Yeah. Uh, dogs can die. Yeah. But usually that uh, creates a, a problem with the audience. Yes. So often best not to kill the dog. No. Um, I mean, unless you're John Wick and then it is your entire movie. But <laughs> Well, th- that's kind of like the Last of Us moment for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes more sense than it's you killed my dog you killed my dog which was my girlfriend's <laughs> dying gift to me to learn to love again and you killed the thing i was supposed to love so you yeah. killed my chance at redemption yeah therefore I like everyone it. gets shot in the knee everyone gets shot in the head yeah i like john wick <laughs> i still haven't seen the original you should watch the original it's good. I hope so. It is good. I like it. Uh, skyscraper. I wonder if that's part of why John or this movie was made too. Like the John Wick, the Atomic Blonde stuff. I wonder if they're testing the waters. It's like I don't know. Man. I don't get it. I don't get it. This was, this was not the movie. This was not the fucking movie that. That the action genre needs right now. It might be the movie the action genre deserves, but not the one it needs. <laughs> or maybe we do need it. I don't know. I feel like I feel like that this episode is over. <laughs> it probably is. All right, we, we've meandered long enough. Uh, unless you have any closing thoughts, I will close this out. Are we? Re- don't we usually say whether we recommend it, right? Like, recommend even just seeing it? We usually do that when we give stars. I'll say yes, I recommend seeing it, even though I only gave it two stars. <laughs> I recommend you waste your time and money. Yeah, you tell Hollywood that you want action movies to be made by seeing this movie. I am not against this movie. I gave it three stars. It is sufficiently entertaining for its brief runtime. Yeah. Um... It's got its problems. <laughs> sure. Um, but Hannah is really pretty. Yeah, it's a pretty lady. I like that half bob thing. Yeah. And like, I really was doing a lot for it's me. Effective look. Effective. All right. Well, anyway, that has been episode number 60 of the Wednesday Night Gentleman Multimedia Empire official podcast. Uh, please feel free to give us a like if you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe to our channel if you'd like to hear more. Uh, you can find us on Twitter where we are at WNG underscore MME underscore OPC. A little hint, that's like the abbreviation of this channel. And you can head on over to Facebook where we are simply the Wednesday Night Gentlemen. Thank you everyone for listening and we will see you again on episode 61 of this podcast. Bye bye.